I know a lot of you have been waiting for this video, but before I start explaining things, I'd like to address something. I designed and built this model from scratch, but I do not have the plans for it because I designed everything on paper. But because a lot of people have been interested in getting the plans for it, I'll start uh, working on that shortly, but you'll have to be patient, this is going to take a lot of time to remodel in 3D. This model is powered by a disassembled cordless drill. The battery goes here in this special holder. I used the orig original uh, connectors from the actual drill in here. Um, this is the motor, uh, original gearbox, and I also used the original trigger as a speed controller. It goes right here and it gets activated by uh, the accelerator pedal. And the ignition here is just a simple on-off switch. All the electronics are connected uh, with cables that are underneath the car. This is the crossplane V8 engine and it's entirely decorative. It is connected to the motor by these three gears. And I made it in, in a way that if I wanted to change the gear ratio to change the speeds of this model, I could just replace this one gear. Next comes the clutch. Now this is not entirely my design. I based it off of another design I found on YouTube and I'll link that in the description, but I've improved that design a little bit. Uh, I made it a little bit more rigid and I also used two hydraulic uh, pistons instead of one uh, to balance it out a little bit. And that seems to be working fine. And instead of sandpaper, I also used a bicycle inner tube rubber for the friction plates. Now, what the clutch does is it takes the input from the motor and outputs it to the gearbox. And as you can see, normally it just moves as one singular piece. But when you press the clutch pedal and push liquid into these two uh, pistons, these two plates separate. And now, uh, because there's no, no friction left in there, uh, the input and output can move separately. This is the Free Speed Plus Reverse Gearbox. I'm quite proud of this design. It actually took me a couple of weeks to settle down on what kind of gearbox I want to use and actually design it. This was the most complicated thing to design in this whole build. In order to better demonstrate how this thing works, I'll remove the stop part and now you can see that the shifter is using a simple ball joint to move freely. And this dowel is what selects the gears by moving these things here. Right now we're in neutral because none of the gears are selected. And let's say if the power is flowing through the clutch into these two gears, these gears are moving these parts called the counter shafts. And on these counter shafts, you can see these spinning round things with uh, these knobs that are called uh, dog clutches. Now these can move, can slide up and down on the counter shaft, but they cannot rotate on it. And the, uh, the power flows through these. But since we're in neutral, again, uh, power just stops here and nothing goes into the rear wheels. However, if I was to select first gear by sliding this down, you can see that these dog clutches right here engage. And now, when power flows through all of this, it starts driving this gear, which starts driving the rear wheels and the car goes, starts going forward. The same concept applies to all the gears except for reverse. In order to make a car go in reverse, you have to add another gear in the circuit uh, to change the rotation. And you can see this additional gear right here. This is called the differential and it transfers power from the gearbox and into the rear wheels. Now, normally you'd assume that each wheel should spin at the same speed at all times. And this tends to be the case most of the time as you can see, but sometimes each wheel has to spin at different speeds. Let's say for example you're making a turn like this and you can see that this way this wheel has to travel a longer distance than this one so they have to spin at different speeds. If they don't you lose traction. So to demonstrate how this works I'm gonna block this wheel and I'm gonna send power into the differential. You can see that not only does this wheel spin alone but it also spins twice as fast because it uses all the energy that goes from the gearbox. And if I let go of this wheel again, they both start spinning. Same goes here. These are the hydraulic disc brakes. More specifically, 
These are the calipers and these are the rotors. The rotors are connected to the wheel and the calipers are connected to the frame of the car. When you push the brake pedal, you send liquid through this tube and then through the steener section and into the two hydraulic pistons that are housed inside the caliper body. Even though each caliper only has one hydraulic piston inside it, it still applies equal pressure from both sides of, uh, of the rotor, as you can see. The first brake pad engages, and then after it starts feeling resistance here, uh, the second one comes in. And now it's pinching it with equal pressure, because the piston right here is pushing these two pads away at equal, at equal pressure, obviously. This works a lot like the clutch, just in the opposite way. Going back to the front of the car, you can now see the steering system. This is called the Ackerman Rack and Pinion Steering System. The way this works is you turn the wheel and the rotation turns this shaft, which has two universal joints. And these are here to change the direction of a rotating shaft. The shaft turns this pinion gear, which then moves the rack forward and back. What's cool about Ackerman steering is that it can turn uh, the wheels unequal amounts. So for example, if I go left, you can see that this wheel turns slightly more than this one. And if I go right, the same happens. Now this might seem strange, but if you remember me talking about the rear wheels and how we sometimes need to spin at different speeds, something similar happens here. Because when turning, each wheel has to follow an arc and the inside wheel always has to, always follows a smaller arc than the outside one. So they, each ha they both have to uh, turn different amounts. If they don't, you again run into the problem of losing traction. Let's call this part the control panel. Here you can see the three pedals and the steering wheel and also the ignition. Um, this is the clutch, the brake and the accelerator. The clutch and brake are hydraulic, so here you can see the hydraulic master cylinders and the springs that push the pedals back. The accelerator pedal performs two functions. First, it pushes the, the trigger of the speed controller, which controls the motor, and it also pulls on this cable, which runs through this bicycle cable housing and opens up the butterfly valves of this bug catcher intake. Now, you can see these little holes I made in these levers. These are for adjusting uh, the rate at which the, the valves open. I made this so that I could synchronize the opening of the valves with the acceleration of the motor. I'm sure you guys would enjoy a closer look at some of the more complicated components. So to make that possible, I'll disassemble them. This is the core of a clutch. Again, you have your input and your output. Normally, they spin as one, but when these two plates are separated, both can spin separately. Here you can see the rubber friction pads. They're actually wearing down and producing some flakes, so they might need to be replaced in the future. I had some tear out in here also. This right here is where the clutch normally sits and you can actually see the flakes uh, falling from the rubber. I also forgot to mention something very important. Every moving part of this mechanism is coated with either dry soap or candle wax. And this makes a massive difference. You can see how smoothly this can run. Um, I'm sure that without lubrication, the, none of this would work at all. Here's the engine. Uh, I put a lot of time into making this run as smoothly as possible. As you can see, the gaps over here are massive. This is to reduce friction. And this engine actually runs surprisingly smoothly, as you can see.
Now, I messed up a little bit when making this engine. I, I glued the crankshaft incorrectly. Uh, these two parts are rotated 90 degrees away from each other. They're supposed to be rotated 180 degrees uh, to make a proper cross-plane V8. Uh, so this messes with the firing order a little bit, but it still works. It's just a somewhat odd firing order. So if you uh, watch this rotating piece of tape, and when I push the pistons in the correct order, you can see that the crankshaft rotates properly. Again, the gearbox. I absolutely love this thing. It is very solid. Uh, it runs really smoothly. And let me just show you how compact this thing is. You can see this part right here just barely fits into the gearbox. And now, last but not least, the differential and calipers. So this is it for this video, I want to thank you all very much for watching and I have a feeling I might have to stay here for a while.